we're going to look at the Speedlink Competition Pro Extra. A quick unboxing, a review and we'll look at the bundled games. This is a USB joystick for PC or Android, in the classic Competition Pro design. While I usually play for fun on real hardware, I record my videos with a Vice emulator on PC to get the best recording quality. So, I wanted a joystick that was closer to the authentic experience, instead of a joypad or arcade stick. Speedlink are a German company who have been around for a while now, and they have a fair few peripherals available. I already had the steering wheel from them that I was happy with, so I thought I'd give this a go. The stick has a nice weight to it, and the plastic casing has a high quality feel to it. The plastic for the buttons is very smooth and they don't feel quite as high quality. The buttons are also reasonably firm with a nice click. I would have preferred them to be a little softer, but it's not off-putting. The stick, however, has a very tight spring and has a lot of resistance. It feels incredibly robust. I don't think this will ever snap off like the joysticks bundled with the C64 reproduction. While the resistance will put people off, it does have the benefit of making it much less likely you'll hit the wrong angle by accident. I found it was very accurate when playing games that needed a bit of precision. However, this isn't a joystick for a waggling sports game, as you end up tiring quickly. It works nicely with Vice, with all four buttons operating as a fire button on a C64, although there doesn't appear to be an obvious way to remap any of them to a separate key like Space without using software like Xpadder. For native PC games, it annoyingly for me has the main fire button set for left-handed joystick control. If you're like me and grew up using a joystick on the 8 bits, you're probably more likely to use this right-handed, and I found it frustrating that it doesn't have a simple solution for this. There is a turbo fire switch, which is a nice addition for those games that need you to hammer the fire button. All in all, I'll be using this for the majority of games I'll record, as it's pretty accurate and works in either hand on vice. Anything that needs a lot of joystick waggling though, I'll use my cheap arcade stick, as it has a very loose spring and a short throw on it. So let's move on to the games now. These can be downloaded on the PC with the code inside the box, and are mostly clones of classic games. There are some real licensed games from Epix here too, and they all have some degree of retro styling. The collection has been put together by German software house Magnusoft, who specialise in budget games for PC and mobile, and the games here certainly reflect that. Some can be played in either 8-bit or 16-bit modes, though the degree it changes varies depending on the game. First up is Bomber Warrior, a simple Bomberman clone. This reminds me of the early Bomberman games on NES, or Dino Blaster on Game Boy if you're from a PAL system region. All the power-ups you'd expect are here, and it plays very nicely, although the frantic pace of modern Bomberman games is missing here. Boulder Dash is regarded as one of the best games on the 8-bit systems, with the C64 generally considered the best of the bunch. Here, Boulder Match 5 matches the mechanics of the game, but doesn't manage to have the same feel to it. The controls don't feel as tight, nor does the updated graphics help any. I wasn't keen on this. The first Epic's license here is California Games. I was really looking forward to playing these games, but unfortunately I was sorely disappointed. Every event feels very slow and very difficult to control. Even the graphics leave much to be desired. Not one to buy the joystick for. Chopper Destroyer is a choplifter clone. Bright and colourful, it sticks to the choplifter formula of rescuing hostages that you break out of enemy bases. It doesn't feel quite as busy as the original arcade game, which can be a good thing, as it was very hard. This is an okay version, the controls could be a bit tighter, and it's too easy to kill the hostages by accident. Drop Sector is a reimagining of Drop Zone, and hence Defender. Again, the pace is dialed back a bit here, so it is a bit easier to get into. It controls well, and plays just as you would expect. It manages to recreate the fun of the original. Jump Man is cleverly renamed as Jump Boy here. You control a stickman collecting objects and avoiding bouncing enemies to progress to the next level. It's all pretty simple stuff and recreates the 8-bit vibe of the original, but might not be all that exciting for newcomers. Surely one of the first games you're likely to fire up when you get this. Karate takes the formula of Way of the Exploding Fist and International Karate and gets it mostly right. The hit detection is just about right and all the moves work in much the same way as previous games. You'll enjoy this one. Clicks is not a coffee vending machine tie-in, it's a Klax clone. Klax is a bit of a Marmite game, it does seem to polarise players. It's never going to overshadow Tetris, but it is enjoyable enough for what it is, and I was a fan of Klax back in the day. This is a perfectly competent recreation, if a little slow to start off. You might have expected Moon Battle to be a Space Invaders or Galaxian clone. 
However, it seems to be a version of a more obscure arcade game that has static asteroid belts to shoot through between more standard fare. The asteroid levels are very boring to plough through. A version of the aforementioned games would have been much more interesting. The alien shooting levels are unfortunately not much better. You won't go back to this one. Moon Jumper sees a take on Moon Patrol. Moon Patrol isn't the hardest of games to get into, and is really straightforward. This isn't exactly like Moon Patrol though. Your forward fire is more like a machine gun, and you make the holes in the path by blowing mines and objects up. It also feels like the sprites are bigger, so you can see less of the road ahead. I like this, but purists might not like the different mechanics. Another game that I'm not 100% sure what it is a recreation of. Moe's Garden has elements of a few different games, and is presented in a pretty cutesy manner. It has elements of Dig Dug and maze chase games like Pac-Man. Perhaps it's based on a game I've not come across before. Comment below if you know what it might be. I thought it was okay, but there are better games here. Magnusoft's knack of changing names just enough is stretched to breaking point here. Pit Start sees their take on Pit Stop. This looks very nice. The road moves really smoothly and there's good parallax scrolling in the background, but it's just too easy to get round some of these tracks. Not one you'll come back to. Trio Blazer gets a remake treatment next. Control your ball travelling down an endless road in a space once again. Rail Racer plays just like its inspiration. It's a nice idea that still holds up today. Magnusoft might have the rights to use Rainbow Arts branding, but that doesn't explain why they've attached this to this Pang clone. Instead of travelling round the world, busting balloons, you're a diver doing so underwater. Why the balloons or bubbles would bounce around like this at the bottom of the ocean isn't explained, but this is a very nice conversion. One of my favourites out of this collection. River Raid is a classic on the Atari 2600, and for good reason. Smooth scrolling and tight gameplay made it a hit, and here we see a reasonably accurate representation of it. Some of the fun here is lost though, the nice presentation doesn't make up for the fact that the game simply plays better on 8-bit hardware. Stick to the original, the tension in making a last minute bridge burst is lost here. RoboDug is a very close clone of DigDug. The aesthetic is so close you might be forgiven for getting it as a clone. It's just as much fun as the game it's based on. Definitely worth playing if you pick this joystick up. Another real epics license, Sea Wolf 3 is a spiritual successor to the Sea Wolf arcade games. The difference in the 8 and 16 versions is most pronounced in this one. There's no getting away from the fact that this is very simple, but it is fun for 5 minutes. I was never a fan of Sokoban when I had it on a bootleg multicart on the Game Boy, and I can't say I'm any more sold on it now. This version has overly large playing fields and multiple annoying enemies to get in your way, one only for fans of this type of game. Unfortunately, Summer Games does not improve on the performance of California games. Once again, we have a painfully slow and unresponsive control, at times feeling like a browser-based flash game. A terrible waste of a license. This borrows a lot of the look of Pit Start, with no doubt a lot of code shared across. Super Drive On is a hang-on clone, and it is fun although. Like Pit Start, it is way too easy. It's difficult to even go off the road, and you don't seem to collide with much when you do. Also, hit detection with the other bikes seems off. It's hit and miss whether you actually collide with them as you pass through them or not. Okay, but not great. No Maria Whitaker or Wolf from Gladiators in the title screen of this barbarian clone. The bar bar is exactly what you might expect from first glance. All the moves and styling from the original are here, and like Karate earlier, the hit detection is pretty spot on. A nice conversion. Don't be fooled by the name, this has nothing to do with Turrican. Have Magnusoft shoehorned another license they own into the name to make this sound more appealing? Strange as Load Runner is a well known game on its own. This is a serviceable enough version, but it isn't optimised with the speed link joystick. You can only open holes on one side of the platform. Using the keyboard allows for both sides, something they really should have checked out. Also, it's called Load Jumper here, but there isn't any jumping. Mediocre. I'm in danger of repeating myself, but all of these Epix multi-event games have the same issues. Too slow, poor controls and no other language options other than German makes it difficult to read the instructions for the different events. You won't feel like you're missing out however, once you try and struggle through what would be the most simple of events. Once again, this is poor. A Pengo clone now. Yeto sees you moving ice blocks around to try and crush the enemies in this single screen puzzle game. I'm not that familiar with the original, but this is okay. 
though it's not really clear to me what the other mechanics are in this game, like the ice blocks with the animals in them. Last up is a Tetris clone, Metris Blocks. You'd think this name would be too close to avoid litigation, but there it is. I really couldn't get on with this, and perhaps the stick is too heavy for this kind of quick placing, but I think it's more down to sluggish response in the game itself. Pass on this one. So that wraps up the review of the games. I don't think they're worth buying the stick for, but it is a nice little addition, and there'll be a good reintroduction for players unfamiliar with emulators or streaming services, and downloading and getting on with them is relatively straightforward. <laughs>